Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect, starting with the 144,000, all right, as well as the large multitude, all right, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on at the time of his second coming in which he will gather the remnant, okay? And that's how the remnant will be counted under Yahweh Shai. You'll have the 144,000 with the 12 disciples at the head of that, and then you'll have a large multitude all right, gathered from every kindred, people, tongue, all right, and nation as the Israelites, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have been scattered, okay? And in these latter days, we've been brought back through the Holy Spirit, Rechach all right, to stand on our feet, all right, and fulfill what was written of that remnant to be gathered to fulfill the promise and be heirs, all right, to what was given to our forefather Abraham, passed down to Isaac, all right, passed down to Jacob, which fell upon the head of the 12 tribes of Israel, which pursuing the prophecy are still here in these latter days, suffering, all right, all right, of the uh, curses, all right, but revived in these latter days through the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. We've been comforted. Okay, through the words, all right, that have been sent to the holy prophets, all right. Now, I wanted to do a response to this situation. I'm pretty sure you brothers and sisters have saw, all right, these individuals who were once a part of Great Millstone, all right, have ultimately, after being put out, which he was put out, and this individual followed suit, Okay, he was put out, the ex-head of Mississippi was put out, character flaws, you know, poor leadership, amongst other things, you know, which we had hoped would be uh, fixed and reconciled. But hey, things happen, all right, and this individual here, you know, was told, you know, to report back to the Mississippi camp and he decided to go with him because ultimately the Mississippi camp all right told this individual you shouldn't be on camera you should fall back learn the scriptures you can just you know uh, be behind the camera you know until ultimately you learn because you're going left on the breakdowns you don't seem to really all right uh know what you're talking about as you uh teach and we can see it you know 100 percent when you look at these individuals but he didn't want that you know ultimately he wanted a position of authority which uh it's come out you know that he is supposed to be john the baptist and this here is king david all right because um as you know they had a gathering unto themselves you know opposing themselves teaching you know, a false doctrine, a po you know, pretty much everything that they've taught, you know, they've, you know, rearranged it, you know, as a means to get back, you know, at the apostles and the men who they were once amongst, you know, in which it's gone off the deep end fully because now they're teaching these new names, all right, as um, we're going to show you these names are associated with particular doctrines and philosophies that crept themselves and wiggled themselves amongst the churches, all right, at the time of, you know, ultimately the Apostle Paul, okay, Timothy was warned about it, all right, the Apostle John, when you read his letters, he was addressing, all right, this philosophy all right, and gospel all right, that crept in amongst the flock at the time that the church right, was functioning, all right, and here we go again. So this lesson, we're going to go into some history, 
as I saw um, the Apostle Ramla do a video associating these two men with Hymenaeus and Alexander, which we're going to show you, were two men who were once amongst the church, all right, but started to teach false doctrine and drew disciples after them, which is the same thing that happened here. All right, but as we said, eventually that thing is going to break up, and now you have individuals leaving these two all right, as they see that what Great Millstone was saying and the reason these individuals were put out and, and pretty much away from us, all right, they saw itself to be true as they started gathering with them. <laughs> and we said that. And you have these uh, individuals doing videos exposing these two, you know, bringing out the stuff that they're doing and whatever, you know, which I'm not going to get into too much of that, you know, but uh, it was said that, you know, they're teaching these names and that this is supposed to be John the Baptist and this is supposed to be, you know, uh, King David, which the scriptures, all right, tells us in Sirach, the seventh chapter in the fourth verse is to seek not preeminence of the Lord, neither the king, all right, of the king, the seat of honor. Now, let's look up this word preeminence. Right, because that's ultimately what these individuals are doing. <laughs> and the men who gather themselves unto them in their ignorance, you know, follow these individuals in their bitterness towards Great Millstone. And once they got amongst them, they started to see eventually that, yo, know, these dudes ain't right. All we're doing in these chat rooms is talking about GMS. Y'all like, basically, they call them bitter, bitter hurt women. Who just want they lick back and mad at her you know ex-boyfriend who left her that's basically how they described them okay then you know you two individuals uh you know are telling these men one-sided stories and you have them running around all right with slander all right because you you two individuals have the tendency to just lie and without fear. And that's one of the things that as they got amongst you, they saw the contradictions, the lies. Okay. And the complete weird on this. Right. But, you know, you individuals doing these videos, you know, apologizing to GMS, you know, they're still saying they don't agree with what we teach. We still wicked. But they said they apologized to Great Millstone because they, they, the, we warned them about those two individuals. <laughs> and you don't have to apologize to us, all right? Because ultimately, you're still running with the wrong doctrine, all right, that we're in the New Covenant. Here it is, y'all broke up in the New Covenant. Imagine getting that award in the kingdom, you know, the, basically the first niggas to... to, to to uh, break up in the new covenant. Anyway, all right, there's still time to repent, you know, and ultimately uh, the, the, the who, who has the truth, all of that will be made manifest, and it is being made manifest. Now, the, this word is preeminence is the fact of surpassing all others. All right now, they're the leaders of the new covenant. All right, um, superiority, all right, um, supremacy, greatness, excellence, distinction, all right, prominence, all right, predominance, eminence, importance, and fame, you know, stature, and that's, you know, what these individuals did, all right, and they exalted themselves, okay, and were found out to be hypocrites. Sirach 1 and 29, be not an hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. And these individuals have got on camera and just said all kinds of stuff. You know, now there's a God, there's an underworld with evil spirits and all kind of stuff. There's no need to go into all of it. You know, at the end of the day, with these new names we're about to go into and show you. All right. Pretty much that's all we need to see. That these men have gone completely off the deep end and they're dwelling and delving in witchcraft. That's what this is. Okay? We'll show you. 
Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest. Okay? Saying one thing and doing another. Exalt not thyself lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so God discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation. All right? Because thou came not, all right? Thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord. But thy heart is full of deceit. And that describes these two individuals to a T. In particular, the head of it all. In which, you know, we you didn't see us doing a whole bunch of videos going into, you know, this guy's flaws. And, you know, but this dude is on video every week, you know, bringing up, you know, uh, you know, bringing, you know, com coming out with secrets. <laughs> you know, uh, putting men's personal matters out. And anyone who watches them and you look at it for what it is and true, you should clearly see that these are just, they're just hurt. You see? So exalt not thyself, lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so God discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation. And that's what's happening. And now everybody's doing videos. Now you're being mocked. And the crazy part about it is all you're going to do is get on camera and go even more left. All right? Because as a character flaw, you can't be wrong. Okay? To the point where you will create, all right, a narrative and a truth and live in it. All right? Which is really a, a the, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the traits of a psychopath. <laughs> all right? That's a dangerous individual. Who will create a truth and live in it right before your eyes, all right, and swear to you up and down that uh, the, 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 that they're justified and right. And they didn't do what you just saw them do or they didn't say what you just heard them say. High level witchcraft. High level witches, man. And these type of individuals, as we're going to show you, okay, were coming up amongst the church, okay, at the time of, you know, the apostles, all right, and the disciples. Now, let's listen to this real quick, and then we'll get into it. Let's see here. See, y'all are not speaking the language that Adam was speaking. All right, y'all are not speaking that. The Lord divided the languages during the Tower of Babel. You see that in the scriptures. And the Hebrew language survived. All right. Which is why you have Eber, Peleg. All right. Which Eber means Hebrew, Ibar, because there was a faithful remnant at the time of the Tower of Babel. All right. Who ultimately held to the traditions. Okay. And ultimately that righteousness that, you know, was passed down from Adam through Seth, eventually survived. And at the time that Abram was awakened, he was called what? All right, a Hebrew, Ibar, linking him to that legacy all right, that, hold, uh, that had ultimately survived the Tower of Babel. Okay, the languages were confounded, but the Hebrew language survived. And the name that was given all right, unto Adam, the name, all right, that was called on, all right, through the son of Seth, Enos, then men began to call on the name of the Lord. That name is the same name that was given unto Abraham. That is the same name that was given unto Moses. Okay, and he said, this is my name forever and my memorial to all generations. Okay. And in the heavens, his name is Yahweh. And in the heavens, his son's name is Yahweh Shai. In the book of Revelation, the, the uh, 22nd chapter, he said, I, Yahweh Shai, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things unto the churches. In the book of Revelation, maybe the first chapter, the 22nd chapter, but he says, Yahweh Shai, which is the name that was given unto him before he was conceived in the womb. All right. 
by the angel Gabriel. So the language of the heavens is the Hebrew. But what's so crazy about this, as we're going to show you, is that these names that these individuals are going to say, all right, have a lot of Greek. All right. Some of them are Greek words. So you're telling me the Greek is the language of the heavens? This is what happened when men get consumed by spirits. Okay. They have created their own truth and you can't tell them that it's not true. And eventually these two are going to break up. Right. So the heavenly tongue, which is why these names that we mentioned to you, you're not going to find much on. And brothers through the Holy Spirit looked it up and we found the names that y'all are getting ready to say. There's only one we couldn't, you know, quite get a grip on. And we'll show you, show you that's the name of Satan. We're going to show you that. But overall, you're getting ready to see that basically you're witnessing the church of Yahweh Bashim Shai and the things that happened back then happen right now, right before your face, man, with these particular teachings and this esoteric <laughs> weird wisdom that's creeping back up into the church today. And it's more individuals going around doing this type of stuff behind closed doors. <coughs> All right, you're not going to find much. <laughs> but for you all who do have the Holy Spirit and you are truly oh, sincere. Oh, boy, how does that even make sense, bro? We will recommend to you. you it's heavenly names. So y'all didn't go to the video and pull it up. I just got the clips that was sent to me and um, just put this together. <laughs> Here, uh, listen to it. We're telling you. It's given to men on earth. Like Moses, the apostles, this is how you cast out demons. So basically, you don't cast out demons in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. These are the names you're able to cast out demons. All right. Under, but then at the same time, you, you, you all splitting up, breaking up in the new covenant. And you still have to cast out demons amongst Israel in the new covenant. It doesn't make sense. But anyway. So starting with the most high, Grandma Kamar. That is indeed his name. A Grandma Kamar. All right. And we're going to give you the name. We're going to show you this stuff he's talking about. All right. But let's keep going. All right. The Holy Spirit. His name is Barbalos. Barbalos is the name of the Holy Spirit, which that's a Greek name. The name of our Lord. Teddy ain't feeling it. Abarmento. Okay. That is the name of Yahweh Shah is Abarmento. All right, now check this out. This is his name. I want to. That is all of them. And yes, when you've seen our ministry, how we have been able to defeat all evil that come against it, how you have been able to see. What we have been able to do is basically he's a legend in his own mind. When it comes to foes like GMS, all our enemies, everything like that. These are the heavenly names. All right. Who have been captured by the demon Satan. Which Satan's name? We will tell you that as well. His name is Yaw Dabo. <laughs> His name is Yaw Dabo. 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 Now that's the one we couldn't find nothing on. All right. So if anybody finds any, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> any uh, thing on that, you know, present it. But let's go back here, and then we're gonna look these things up. Heavenly names yeah. that we're telling. Yeah. That's given to men on earth, like Moses. The apostles. This is how you cast out demons. So starting with the most high. 
Grandma Kamar. The Most High, is, as you, it sounds like he said, Grandma Kamar. All right, so we found this name, all right? As you can see here, this is a website that deals with Gnosticism, okay? Gnosticism, which ultimately we're going to show you, all right, goes back to uh, ancient left-hand wisdom, all right, that started amongst the Greeks, okay? And you use this, this name here, all right? Agram Ma Kamare, as you can see here. All right, now it says, all right, this is basically how you pray in these names. It's giving you basically, um, you know, which there's books, there's a bunch of books you can get, you know, that goes into this garbage. I wouldn't recommend getting them, all right, which is going to, you know, go to the tip of the you know, iceberg and show you a few things, all right, and, uh, and then we're gonna get out of here, but this is uh, the, the the this is why we should fear the Lord. Okay, it says this post is to introduce us to the idea and practice, all right, of praying to the absolute. It is good to know that when we are working in three factors, working for the absolute, so to enhance it, all right, when our monad, okay, and all of these things go back to left hand deities and you know practices real being achieves its realization this makes the absolute to glow brighter when we help others to do the same light power wisdom love of the absolute is enhanced the absolute it says recently during our classes we learned a mantra which comes from the book all right pistis sophia unveiled by master samuel on we okay so this is a particular book all right, I didn't look it up. All right, this is the name or mantra, which, what is a mantra? Basically, a mantra is like a chanting, I believe. Let's see here, mantra, a natural chamber, all right, a part of a stomach. No, hold on, that's not, that's antra. Let me get that M up in there. All right, in Hinduism, a word sounded repeated to a concentration and meditation all right <laughs> 18th century yada 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 all right a statement a slogan repeated frequently so this is the name or mantra for the great invisible as it is referred to in the pistis sophia which sophia means wisdom all right it says the name or mantra is a, a gram maka mare a, a Gram Makamari. Now let's listen to this guy again. This is how you cast out demons. So starting with the Most High, Gram Makamari. You heard him? That is indeed his name. Gram Makamari. That is indeed his name. Now. There's a particular uh, individual, which let me pull up the uh, Elder Manatha Zakba's video real quick. Let's see here. <laughs> this may be him right here. Bug outs are pushing Gnostic names. Bam, he, he, he already went into it because we were talking about it earlier. All right, but um, let's see here. He has a, a longer, you know, section. But boom, here's all right. One of the individuals who ultimately he used to be in the GMS Baton Rouge camp, but uh, as he was watching a war, he was uh taken by that spirit and ultimately was communicating with him and went over there with him. This was uh, recent, over the last, you know, maybe five months, and he's been with him. And this is the guy who made that prophecy that the Apostle Tahar was supposed to, you know, go back to the spirit world. You know, he put a 40-day limit on it, and the Apostle Tahar is still here, you know. And he said, ultimately, if the Apostle Tahar doesn't die, he's a false prophet, and he shouldn't teach no more. But he's still teaching, 
All right, but the Heavenly Father still has receipts on all of the stuff you've said, you've done. All right, and uh, ultimately, as you can see him here, okay, listen to what he says. He's talking to one of the ex-members of the New Covenant, I believe, Yahweh the Maccabees, which, you know, you know, they're still they're going off, but at least they had enough sense to get the hell away <laughs> you know, from these individuals. They say, Yahweh, do you have been given over to an evil Baba Kasha, Agram Mahamare. Which, what language is that? Baha Shem, Arbamento, Waha Racha Kadash, Babalo. Baba Kasha judged these demons. So, th these dudes are in trouble. This is some straight up, all right, uh, uh, left hand, all right, as you can see here, this is a mantra. All right, which this this book brings it out, and there's other books that go into it. Okay, but a uh, Gram Mahamari, all right, in the Pistis Sophia is presented as one word, a uh, Gram Mahamari. There you go. All right, and what is a uh, the Pistis Sophia? Okay, that's the you know b the name of this book. Let's see if we can just see what it looks like. Ultimately, but this is the book, the Gnostic Bible, the Pista Sophia. So basically, these men are bringing in Gnostic Babel, all right, which we're going to show you what that is, all right? Now, the other name they said, oh, man, the other name they said, Spirit. His name is Barbalos. Barbalos. That's the name of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's see here. Barbalo is a Greek name, you know, but they're, they're talking about we're not speaking the ancient holy tongue, but these, these dudes are teaching you Greek. Barbalo, Greek, refers, all right, to the first emanation of the most high in several forms of gnostic cosmology or homogony barbalo is often depicted as a supreme female principle the single passive all right all right incident of creation of his manifold all right and barbalos is not hebrew all right the meaning of the semitic aramaic name all right is uncertain god is for daughter yada 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 barbalos comes from a jewish wisdom tradition which the jews got into that greco-roman garbage okay and you got the secret book of john you know the, the the book of thomas all of it all deals with that gnostic garbage man okay barbalos is the is the name given to the first entity to arise from God in the literature of the classic Gnostics after God she's the foremost inhabited of the Plumora all right Gnostic name in heaven God doesn't create Barbalo per instead she comes from him by indirect means you know and even if it, but but ultimately this is the the origin of the garbage that they're going into you can look more into these things all right, but we're going to get some history showing you that this type of stuff crept up amongst the church before. All right, because a lot of you, you get tired of these back and forths, but you don't understand. We, we're going to show you in the scriptures these same back and forths happened and were warned about. All right, back then by the apostles and, 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 and disciples, man. The name of our Lord. This is the name of Yahweh Shai right here. So we got the name of the Most High, the name of the Holy Spirit. Now we got the name, all right, of our Lord, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. A barmento. A barmento, okay? A barmento, Gnostic word of the day. See how this all goes back to Gnostic, okay? A barmento, a name used for by 
Jesus in the Scythian or the Scythian text. All right, what is Scythians? Let's just look it up real quick. Scythians were one of the main currents of Gnosticism during the second and third century, along with Valentinianism, right, and the rest of this stuff. Okay, Greeks. Okay, so this is all left-hand madness, all right? And they were going around teaching this stuff amongst the ministers of the New Covenant as they started meeting, as I said to brothers, get these dudes two meetings with that maniac, and they're eventually going to start to see it for what it is. And it came to pass. This is, this, this is what we were all saying. This was going to happen, and it's happening. And now those individuals who were once in the video growling at us screaming at us they're doing videos saying we're sorry you know apostle tahar is not the son of perdition they were tripping we still don't agree with y'all but we're sorry all right for you know because y'all warned us about these individuals okay the scythians greek were one of the main currents of gnosticism during the second and third century okay and you can just look these things up if you want to but we just see that ultimately these are the things that stem from being hellenized by the greeks okay a baramento a name used for by jesus is the scythian in the scythian text piscist sophia all right we just saw that describing him as merged with thoth and hermes all right which Hermes in Greek mythology, all right, is ultimately where you get the term Hermaphrodite. Thoth, all right, is associated with Greek customs as well. And where did the uh, Greeks get, all right, the majority of their gods from? The uh, the, uh, the the Egyptians, when they came into power. Remember they, they that at that library at Alexandria. Okay, they, they pretty much tapped into all of that left-handed Egyptian, uh, uh, you know, garbage. Okay? But ultimately, one second here. All right, it says, describing him as merged with Thoth, Hermes, because Jesus calls on God while standing up on the water. All right. It is a traje trajectory that merges the Hebrew. All right. At by Abiar. All right. M Mim, power of waters. Waters of Shemayim. All right. Uh, power is Allah. All right. So you see, it has the M Y M. Really, is Mayim or Shemayim the waters basically, the heavens. All right, it says with the Greek form of Egyptian god Thoth, and is found in book, all right, uh, four of the Codex. All right, Asquianus Thoth is associated with Logos, all right, the expressed image of the Most High, the power of word, and Ra scribe translator. It is a formula of, for Seth Typhoon and can be found, all right, in a Demotic Leiden papyrus. So, as you can see, all right. It's associated with, all right, uh, spells, a collection of ancient Scythian tablets inscribed with Greek and Latin, Thyphonian spells and curses were discovered buried near the Appian Way in Rome. There are other texts identified as Scythian from the Egypt, Egyptian brother of Osiris. It's a lot. It's a lot here, but... This is that madness. Okay. <laughs> a baramento, name of the sacred being whom is sent in, uh, who, who sent his human soul to earth 2,000 years ago and came to be known as Jesus. So here it is. They're trying to tell you that this is some ancient, you know, hidden, you know, uh, wisdom sent directly from the heavens. But we went right to a website and found this shit. Okay, Christian Gnosticism in the early church. All right, now let's get a scripture real quick. Let's bring the scriptures in. 
This is the book of First Timothy 6 and 20. All right. Now we know Timothy was sent by Paul to the church of Ephesus, which was the you know hub of many of these philosophies. So we got to understand as we're reading these particular things that Paul is warning Timothy of, that Paul is warning the Colossians and these various different churches of, a lot of it has to do with ancient philosophies that the Jews, okay, who ultimately started to bring in, you know, uh, Greco-Roman customs started to, you know, wiggle in amongst the, the, the church and particular followers of Yahweh Shai did the same. All right, and we know what happened, you know, at the time of Constantine. He totally meshed Egyptian, Babylonian, and Greco-Roman customs into the Bible. So Paul warns Timothy, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding vain and profane babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. All right? Oppositions, all right? And that's what these uh, gospels and doctrines are all about. They're all vain babblings. All right now, the word science is gnosis. See that? Gnosis, Gnosticism. Okay, and they had many beliefs. All right, but one of the main beliefs was that ultimately, uh, you know, Yahweh Shai, all right, didn't come in the flesh. Okay, and, and and you know I'm not saying that these individuals are teaching that, but that is an aspect of this gospel, which is why the book of John, all right, the 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 uh, the epistles of John, First John, Second John, Third John, were addressing anyone who says that Yahweh Shah coming not in the flesh is an anti-Messiah. These are the types of philosophies and ideologies that started to creep themselves in amongst the church. Okay, the book of Jude warns us, all right, about these very things, and we'll get into that, but the word is gnosis. Strong's G, 1108. Gnosis. Gnosis. Knowledge signifies general intelligence understanding, all right? This is not some secret, you know, uh, <laughs> you got to go to the heavens to get in. No, it's general intelligence, man. General knowledge of the followers of Yahweh Shai, the deeper and more perfect and large, not, and large knowledge of this religion, such as belongs to the more advanced, all right, and so forth, all right? But gnosis, I'm going to go to the root word, all right, gnosko, to learn, to come to know, to become, to get knowledge, all right, of perceive, feel, to become known, to know, to understand, all right, perceived to have knowledge, all right, to become acquainted with, okay? So this was just basically left-hand knowledge, okay, that started to creep itself up amongst the church, which we see the same thing happening again, all right? Falsely so-called, okay, pseudonumo, pseudos, falsely named, and these are false names, all right, literally falsely named okay <laughs> false liar okay pseudo deceitful false lying okay anoma name false names has started to creep in as this esoteric knowledge that nobody you know uh, the, can get you know, unless you're part of this secret number, which they try to tie to the scriptures, Moses, you know, David, you know, John, you know, but, but, but really, it's just a bunch of bugged out madness. And anyone who got taken by that, and any of you who went and supported these guys, the Heavenly Father has receipts. We saw you, in the, and more importantly, Yahweh Bashim Shai saw you. Now, what do you have to say? See? Because a lot of you individuals who were kicked out or left, you started, you know, in the beginning when they, you know, you know, started out with the argument about King David. Then it became about this. Then it became about that. You know, then, then ultimately it was just a perpetual offense. 
you all joined yourself, went onto their comment board and big them up. How can I get in touch with you? That's why I left too, man. Yeah, well, okay. Well, again, as the Elder Ariala said, the Lord has received you. you. You all can get on video and say what the hell you want. Y'all are through. There's nothing else to say after this. Okay? So, again, all right, reckon by names, okay, uh, rank, uh, deeds, you know, it's, it's more than just the name, but the authority, what you remember, the rank, okay? So, a false name, a false representation of the Lord. Let's read this in the NLT. Timothy is told, all right, by Paul, Timothy, guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you, all right, with their so-called knowledge. And that was tied to what? Gnosis, Gnosticism, which, let's get this real quick. Let's see if I got, I got a few things. All right, give me one second. No, that's not it. Is that what I want? Let me see here. Let me just go here. Early heretical movements. As the scriptures say, there's going to be heresies amongst you. Differences of opinions of the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and so forth. Okay? It says Gnosticism of the Greek Gnosticos. All right? Secret knowledge. Okay, was an important movement in the early Christian centuries, especially the second, all right, that, that uh, offered an alternative to emerging Orthodox Christian teaching. And the Christians were really the followers of Yahweh Shai. Gnostics taught that the world was created by a, all right, Demiruj or Satanic power, which they often associated with the God of the Old Testament. All right, and here it is. They're, they're giving you these names. <laughs> and that there is a total opposition between this world and God. All right, which whether they're, they're teaching you, you know, secretly teaching these things behind closed doors or, or not. At the end of the day, they're bringing a whole nother spirit. Okay. They're coming with a whole nother spirit. Now, there was an article I had. Give me one second here. <clears throat> All right. Christian Gnosticism in the early church. The word Gnosticism comes from the Greek word Gnosis, which literally means knowledge, to know. All right, but it's left-hand knowledge. Gnostics believe that it is special knowledge that brings salvation, and that's what they're telling you now. The only way to be brought into the new covenant is to get with these new names, get with this new gospel. Okay, this new secret wisdom that's only given, you know, to you know their the what they call their, you know, elect, what they've made up. The knowledge is secret and esoteric. Let's see what esoteric means it's for you who don't know. Intended. Or likely for or likely to be understood only by a, a small number now on the right hand side the truth is only going to be understood by a small number but the Lord has that number the teachers will be the 144,000 then you're going to have the large multitude okay but intended for or likely to be understood by only a small number of people with specialized knowledge or interest and they're bringing you this aspect on the left hand side abstruse obscure all right <laughs> rare rarefied rarefied all right abstract difficult hard puzzling okay let's listen to it again you it's heavenly names yeah, yeah. that we're telling yeah it's given to men on earth like moses the apostles this is how you cast out demons. So starting with the Most High, Grand Makamar, that is indeed his name. All right? 
the Holy Spirit. His name is Babylon. The name of our Lord. Abarmento. Okay. That is his name. That is all of them. And yes, when you've seen our ministry, how we have been able to defeat all evil that... Yeah, and then he went on to say, well, we don't know the names in the seventh heaven. And then, uh, you know, they said they knew the names of certain angels. You know, there's just like, ah, man, oh, Lord. You know, but this is that stuff that was creeping in amongst the church. Okay? It says, this knowledge is secret and esoteric. However, it is only accessible to the few elite who can achieve transcendence through knowledge or acquaintance with the divine. You know, all broad momento, whatever the hell his name is. All right. And Tertullian identified the false teaching in the Ephesian church as an early emerging form of Gnosticism. In his descri uh, description of a developed Gnostici, Gnostic hearsay, he used Paul's own expression of myths, myths and endless genealogies. Now these dudes are teaching hell. You see? Endless genealogies. All right. Now they're saying they are uh, uh, John the Baptist. Now, we as the Israelites, we did always look at particular men and say, we believe this is that prophet coming back. We believe this is that prophet coming back. But men weren't to rise up and say, I'm such and such. All right. And they said it was wicked. For you to say a man is, we you believe a particular man, all right, is one of the ancient prophets coming back. They said that was wicked, but secretly they're behind closed doors telling men that they're John the Baptist and King David. You see? And the, the, the multiple witnesses came out as they left from off of them and told, told us that. All right? What's that scripture? Comparing themselves by themselves second corinthians 10 and 12 for we dare not to make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and compare themselves among themselves are not wise boom so all of these things have happened before man okay and timothy is warned here against gnosticism all right, 1 Timothy 6 and 21, which some professing have erred concerning the faith, the faith, grace be with the Amun. So many at that time were already going left and erring concerning the faith. Okay, the book of Jude tells us what? Let's get it real quick and then I'll get an excerpt on this. All right, the warnings of history, all right, to the ungodly. All right, the history of the ungodly. He goes through the history and what was going on amongst the church at this time. Okay, Jude verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you. He's talking to the church here. That ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to, you're going to be in a battle. You're going to have to earnestly contend. He's warning the church, these are things that you're going to have to do. Yet when we do it, people get offended. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. They've shitted on grace. They've told you we, we already passed grace. We're in the new covenant. Okay? Turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness. To just do what the hell they want to do. Wicked, ill, the, the left-handed behavior. All right? <laughs> Talk about shooting the Holy Spirit into a woman through your semen. Like, man, what the hell is wrong with you guys? You freaks. Okay? But again, this is the result of brown, cheap brown liquor, fried chicken, all right, and blunts. 
Okay, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord, all right, and our Yahweh Shai, all right, Mashiach. And he put the church in remembrance of the, the constant rebellions that have went on amongst our people, all right? And what did he say in verse 19? These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. So what was going on? All right, as I always bring this out, let me just get this real quick. This is the purpose of Jude. Jude wrote this book to the church because the church was going through a time of great apostasy and there was no shortage of doctrinal or moral error inside the church. So what was the doing being done? They had to address these errors. That's what you see happening today. If you indeed believe you are following the church of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, these are the types of things that you are going to encounter and witness. Okay, while there were other false churches robbing from the doctrine of the apostles but mixing it with error, are we not seeing that? Okay, having false teachings within them. While Peter talked about the coming of false teachers, Jude addresses them as already being present. Okay, Jude seems to have written this while in Jerusalem, even though he did go on some missionary trips early. 1 Corinthians 9 and 5, when Jude wrote this book, the church was under heavy persecution from Rome, which that's coming, and from the, the Jewish leaders. Jude wrote this book exclusively to fight against apostasy. Do y'all know what that is? Okay, the abandonment or, 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 or renunciation of a religious or political belief. Abandonment, disloyalty, betrayal, defection, and that's what we're seeing, right? Men are defecting. Changing the gospel up, disrespecting the men that taught them, saying that they're the real leaders. This, it says, the apostasy fight against the apostasy that was defiling the church and defectors of the faith who were rebuilding, all right, who were building apostate churches. So you have apostate churches being built. So this is nothing new. When you see these little minions pop up doing this crazy stuff, starting their little rebellions, it happened before. Okay, these are they who had <laughs> departed from the faith that was originally delivered. See, so he was exhorting those of the church to stay faithful to what they had been taught because there, there, there were went men. Okay, excuse me. All right, I'm a bit tired, but the spirit is on me to do this lesson, so I may slur some words. All right. Forgive me, it says, if they were ever in the faith in the first place. Okay, as he talks about in 1 John 2 and 9, they were of us. Let's get that real quick. 1 John. Okay. 1 John 2. Okay. And 19. Start at 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that anti-Messiah shall come. Even now are there many anti-Messiahs, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Boom. So these types of things... As we, again, we're reading the book of John, all right, the epistles of John, as we'll show you here, all right, John appears, to, all right, to have anticipated Gnosticism, all right, its development and threat to the health of the church and wrote to counteract its influence. Based on Greek dualistic, con the, the, the Greek dualistic concept that matter is evil and spirit is good. Gnosticism concluded that for God to be truly good, he had to be pure spirit and could not have created a material universe. But these were all of the philosophies they were going into. But there were more. It, it was never ending. It was, all, it was all over the place. Okay? So John, the revelator, had to address this, which is why... He talked about in the first uh, in, in in this chapter. He was telling you that Yahweh Shai came in the flesh. 
he's harping on these things because there were men coming amongst the church with this, this left-handed wisdom, tying all of these left-hand myths to the Messiah, which you have that same thing going on today. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay? And we see all of these things happening today, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, man. What you had people back then coming up with doctrines saying you can't eat meat, all right, you, you can't have sex. These are the things that were creeping up amongst the church. Don't you see these things creeping up now? You got the, you can't eat meat doctrine. You know, if you don't want to eat meat, don't eat it. You'll have to eat it on certain holy days, but ultimately you don't, if you, but you can't make it a, 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 a doctrine, a law, an order and say you, you're going to be destroyed if you do. But again, these are the things that were popping up. Second Timothy 2 and 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, but they will increase unto more ungodliness. And that's all this is. All right. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. All right. Let's read this in the NLT. Now, these are two individuals being called by name. Okay. This kind of talk spreads like cancer, as in the case of Hymenaeus and Philetus. Okay, Hymenaeus and Philetus. Let's look up Hymenaeus. Strong's G fifty two eleven, Hymenaeus, Hymenaeus, a heretic. One of the opponents of the Apostle Paul. All right, it means belonging to marriage in, in the Greek, but there you go. A heretic. He who, he who that is a heretic after the, the second ammunition of the second and third, just reject them because these types of things were happening. See, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. See? See, they were overthrowing the faith of some with these these different philosophies, these different doctrines. And it's no different in these times, man. First Timothy's one and 18. This charge I. All right. Commit this charge. I commit unto thee, son, Timothy. This is the order according to the prophecies which went before unto thee that thou mightest war a good warfare because you're going to be the head of a church these are the things you're going to have to endure holding faith and a good conscience which some putting away concerning the faith have uh, have made shipwreck i mean you're stranded the, the, the broken boat you're out there but this has happened spiritually men are, are, are when you look up shipwreck men are stranded All right, now ego, now, now agio, to suffer shipwreck. Okay, to be stranded. They're stranded in spirit. They threw. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So he put, he put a curse on their asses, man. Because they were coming amongst the church doing nonsense teaching nonsense okay and i have this uh particular study which you should look it up it's pretty good all right hymenaeus and alexander the virtues the verses which uh this study is based on are very solemn first timothy's 1 18 through 20, Hymenaeus and Alexander were two prominent men in the church at Ephesus who undoubtedly were followers of Yahweh Shai, all right, but who had become seriously sidetracked by the enemy. They had taken in and propagated false teachings, and as a result of this, the apostle had to hand them over to Satan in order to teach them not to blaspheme. 
the purpose was to restore them it was uh it was that they might be taught that they might be disciplined this seems to indicate that they were followers of Yahweh Shai who had been led astray who needed to be disciplined by the Lord all right this reference to Hymenaeus and Alexander brings a warning to us all what are the lessons that we should learn so I'm gonna just jump to this one the dreadful influence of one disobedient follower of Yahweh Shai we note two things here first Hymenaeus and Alexander were not only false teachers in the church why all right then were they judged for their grievous sin surely because they were leaders of this evil work secondly Hymenaeus name is placed first why because he is the ringleader of this false teaching so that could be him okay we could very well be looking at Hymenaeus okay <laughs> all right but if it's not him we're, we're seeing a, a resemblance we're basically seeing that which is then is now okay and they would draw disciples after themselves okay what Paul said here Acts 20 and 29 for this I know that after my departing so grievous wolves entering among you not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise of your own camps speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them all right drawing away men after their bitterness and that's what happened you had men following them in their bitterness turning bitter screaming growling all in the video and then eventually as they started to get amongst each other they were like wait a minute these niggas ain't right okay but this is what we see happening and i typed in here scriptures that address gnosticism and boom when you look it up a lot of them did a lot of these uh, sayings and things we read in the scriptures were going at particular philosophies that were creeped in amongst the church okay colossians 2 and 8 beware lest any man spoil through spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after yahweh shai boom that's what was happening okay for in him dwelleth all fullness of the godhead bodily not a bar of menthol, okay, not all of this other crap that these, these people are talking about, man. Okay? Verse 18, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility of worshiping of angels, introducing into those things which he have not seen. See, the scriptures tell you to seek not out the things, all right, that are too hard for thee the hell are you doing the apostles talked about how particular uh, men started to bring in the worshiping of angels okay let's see here boom yep Sirach the third chapter in the uh, 20th verse the 21 21st verse it says seek not out the things that are uh, too hard for thee neither search out the things that are above thy strength but what is commanded of thee, being a brother, actually changing, not being a nigga, not being a hypocrite, not lying, not having ulterior motives, not seeking preeminence. These are things men never master, but they come in and want to get into all of this deep knowledge. Now you're left out there and then eventually you two are going to break up. And who are you going to be looking to when shit goes down? You're going to be looking to those Mississippi brothers. Good luck with that. But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. And you're talking about, we know the names of the, 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 the 24 angels and the, the, this and the elder, the 24. Like, what are you talking about, man? The seventh heaven name. You see? So the Yahweh and Yahweh Shah are just the earthly names. 
the names they gave you are the heavenly names, but then there's another name in the heavens, in the seventh heaven. We don't know that one yet. They, 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 these dudes are crazy. Be not curious in unnecessary matters, all right, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. Okay, so let no man beguile you. Let's get this in, the, in LT. Don't let anyone, let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial. All right, you can't have sex. All right, or the worshiping of angels. You worship these angels, these new names, saying they have had visions about these things. These sinful minds have made them proud. And this is what they're saying. They're sitting, okay, high out of their mind, drunk, whatever. And, and they're talking about the whole, the, 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 the angel came to me and told me Apostle Tahar is going to die in 40 days. Okay? Or the, the, I've been given the understanding of the, 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 the new names. And then give you a Greek name. Or something out of the, what the hell is this? Barbalo, that's the Holy Spirit. See? Now, <laughs> now you're going off the deep end. Okay? Yep, the Nicolaitans. Which when you go into the scriptures real quick, what you'll find out is that the, the, the Nicolaitans got into that and were warned about it. And these are all things you can look up. I'm just giving you the, uh, hold up. I'm just giving you the, uh, you know, the overall Revelation 2 and 6. But this thou hast, that thou hate, hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which, which I also hate. All right, Revelation 2 and 15. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Okay, and you, you can just look up, you know, what they were going into, but it was go they were going off into these various philosophies. Should have something to do with yep, uh, the destruction of the people, Nicolaitans. A sect mentioned in Revelation 2, 16 and 15, who were charged with holding the era of Balaam, casting a stumbling block before the church of God. By upholding the liberty of eating things sac sacrificed to idols as well as committing fornication. <laughs> okay, so again, all of these things we see popping up in Israel, even outside of these two individuals here, all right, were, were dealt with. Okay, the false teaching confronted by Paul, what was it? Where did it come from? Why is this relevant? To biblical equality in first timothy the uh, fourth chapter the apostle ball confronts a false teaching that he portrays as asceetic in other words someone was teaching that the body and its appetites are evil and must therefore be renounced you shouldn't eat particular things that are good to you, you shouldn't have sex not saying that these two men are doing that but again we see these gospels creeping up in israel okay how the gnostics created their ascetic gospel all right they interpreted the mysteries of cybele the mother of gods through the lens of plato's philosophy see in, in this go a lot of this goes back to plato who was what a greek so now you're seeing who the gentiles were you're seeing how as we read these letters now we got to start going into the background of these chapters and looking it up and studying. Paul isn't just saying don't wear hats because he just saw a hat. No, these were customs that came from the Greco-Roman culture that they were creeping into the church, into the priesthood. See, we ain't got to go into all of this. I mean, you know, we, we've read enough. We see everything for what it is. OK, we see uh, uh, that ultimately these are unclean spirits and the scriptures tell you about unclean spirits. I'll go into that tomorrow. You know, that at the end of the day, the point was made. You know, I mean, we can go into this stuff all day. We can go into all of these scriptures. All right. Because all of these scriptures, what you could do is go to certain uh, 
you know, commentaries. Okay? Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worshiping of angels. And they try to get you to worship these angels. Saying they have had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud. Okay? <laughs> and not holding the head from which all the body by the joints and bands and uh, having nourishment ministered knit together. And that's in Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. See? And men were beguiling. See, all you have to do is go to a uh, commentary. Let's go to uh, BibleHub.com and get Colossians 2 and 18. To give you an example of what I do. Colossians 2 and 18. And then you go to commentary. And boom, you can just look up what each of these so-called scholars say. And there's other sites you can Google it as well. And you'll get all of these, you know, you pick out the meat after you exercise through the Holy Spirit to understand what, what needs to, what's, what can be good and what can be thrown away. Because these scholars, they're good on historical points, what was going on at the time. But when it comes to the breakdowns, they don't have it. You know, the prophecies, they go off. Okay, but but again, one of my favorite is Gill. Matthew Henry's good, but let's see, let's type in Gnosticism and see if that comes up. Boom. <laughs> Who brought that out? Elliot brought this out. Elliot be pretty good too. The angels in this half Jewish system held the same intermediate position between divine and human, which the ordinary Gnostic theories was held by the less personals, supposed emanations of God, the Godhead. Basically, they were putting all of these different, you know, philosophies and mixing them in with the Most High and with Yahweh Shai. Somewhere else where it's mentioned. Yeah, Gnostic. But um, involuntary worshiping of angels, these things, the apostle instances as in they lay their danger of being beguiled of their reward or prize. True humility is an excellent grace, yada, yada, yada. And you look these things up and you, you'll, you'll see that there were things happening. This is the, you know, they go into this century. This this was popular amongst the people. So, you know, the, the, you know just as we're here in America, they're there in Colossae or Ephesus. And particular things that were popular there, they would try to mix it with the church. Well, you have the same thing happening today. So this right here, this Gnostic Bible, this is garbage. The Heavenly Father is going to destroy all of you rebellious niggas. And at the end of the day, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep prophesying. We're going to keep teaching. We're not going to go back and forth. We already know you're going to be close as hell to the screen talking crap. You know, you can keep worshiping the collard green God. All right. And we are ultimately going to keep worshiping Yahweh Bashim Yashad. Now, we went into all of those names, but we couldn't quite get this one right here. Who have been captured by the demon Satan. Which Satan's name? We will tell you that as well. His name is Yah Dabo. No, his name is Yah Dabo. No, his name is Yah Dabo. No, his name is Yah Dabo. Yah Dabo Oath. See, I couldn't really find nothing on that. Okay. Oh shit, we found it. Y'all da ba oath. All right. It's a serpent, a lion headed serpent. So they're getting into all of this Greek, this Greek philosophies. <laughs> Damn, we found y'all ba da ba oath. We found Yabba Dabba Do himself. Wow. 
I am God and there is no other, boast Yah Dabaoth. Lucifer, Satan. See, this is all that 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 left-handed bullshit, man. And we trying to tell you. This is going into, uh, we just did a video going into Lucifer. How are they falling from heaven on Lucifer? They're teaching about fallen angels and all this crap. Yah Dabaoth. That's Satan, you see him? That's that snake in the garden. Is known as the son of chaos, the God eater. Yeah, these, these dudes are through, man. Wow. Wow, we found Yah, we found Yabba Dabba Do. I can't believe it. Because I looked it up and I couldn't find it, but now I, I'm on the video. And here we, here we go. So, hey, man. <laughs> wow. Oh, he got a book. Yabba the Oath and the Father of Life, Flat Earth Creator. The Gnostic guy, Yadaba Oath. I am God, there is none else beside me. According to the ancient Gnostic test, the creator God named Yadabaoth, who was described as the child of chaos, was the son of Sophia. Uh, but I thought these were all, you know, the, the different things that, you know, we, we clearly found this shit on the internet. Anyway, there's so much I could have got into, but it would have been too damn long. So I didn't, I'm not, I didn't bring out everything I had. You know, brothers do responses or ultimately let's just move on because this this world's getting ready to be destroyed any goddamn way. Shalom.